Did you know that Blender can be used as a video editor? In fact, my latest animated short film, Weir, was fully edited using Blender 2.8. I didn't use any expensive uh, video editing software like Adobe Premiere or PowerDirector or Movie Maker or anything like that. Uh, I just used free open source software. So in this video, we're just gonna have a look at how to edit videos using Blender 2.8. So let's get started. First off, I'm going to open up a new file. Uh, if you're going to only work with video editing, I suggest that you go to new and then go down to video editing. If you go to general, that will set up your scene mostly for 3D modeling, but we don't, need to, we don't need to care about all that stuff. We're simply going to use Blender as a video editor. So go to new video editing and you'll be presented with this screen over here. So you have two workspaces, the video editing workspace and the rendering workspace. So the video editing workspace is pretty much set up like any typical video editor. You have this window over here to actually visually see your video clips. You have uh, the settings over here, like the resolution you want to set it at, uh, uh, the file format that you want to set it to, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Um, you have uh, a space here to drag and drop your video clips. And you also have this space here to, to put your video strips and things like that. So here's where you will arrange your video clips and your music clips and some effect clips and things like that. So now let's look at adding some videos. To add video clips, you can do it in one of two ways. You can either go to add movie and then select any video clip that you want. Alternatively, you can also um, look for your video clip in this uh, file system menu over here. Once you've located your uh, folder where you have all your video clips and sounds and things like that, you can simply just go ahead and drag and drop this to the video sequence editor. In general, videos tend to be around 24 to 30 frames per second. In this case, my video is at 29.98 frames per second. You can do loads of things with your video clips. For instance, if you want to make a cut to a video clip, uh, you can simply just select the video clip and press K. And then you can move the video clips around by right clicking and then pressing G like you would uh, a Blender model. Uh, and then just moving it anywhere you like. So you can employ cuts like that. You can also hit uh, press K again. So that will make another cut and then you can delete uh, strips that you don't need. So for example, I can make the video even shorter by cutting those parts that I don't need. Also, I've got to mention that you don't only have to cut videos if you want to cut out certain parts. You may also want to trim videos as well. So in order to trim videos, you can also do the same thing. Just right click one of the ends. It can be either uh, the beginning or the end. Just right click the selector and then press G to move. And then you, you effectively trim the video at that point. Uh, you can also overlay video on top of other videos. So for example, let's just uh, make a cut over here. Maybe let's just say um, I'll cut this part over here. So right click this, OK over here. Alternatively, you can go to strip and then cut, which is also the same as using K. I just like using shortcut keys because that's just what I'm used to. Um, so you, just, uh, you can move this over here. I can hide this video. So if I press H, that'll hide the video. In other words, disable the video from showing. So now the video underneath is playing. But now if I press Alt H, uh, the video on top is playing. So we can add video clips on top of this video. I can demonstrate that further by adding uh, an effect strip to decrease the size of this. So for example, if I go to add uh, effect strip, and then if I say transform, you need to make sure this is selected first in order, to, in order for this to work. Then right click the transform, and then I can change the scale of this one maybe. Uh, use uniform scale. Let's just turn down the scale of this one. Point, uh, four. Let's just move it somewhere here. So you may notice that although we were able to change the size of our video clip, the video that's underneath this one, which is this video strip, has disappeared. So the main reason for that is because the blend type of this video is set to, um, oh sorry, it should be this one because we are applying the effect on top of this one. This one is set to replace. So change this from replace to alpha over. And now the video 
under that will show properly so for example if you're trying to make a fake news documentary kind of a show or something like that uh, you can add those overlays to show breaking news or things like that it doesn't only have to be videos it can be images as well notice that you don't only need to work on one strip you can have uh, multiple strips for example if i go to add effect strip i can add all these other strips like i can add a glow effect uh, once you add a glow effect on top of the uh, transform you need to change the blend type of that one as well to alpha over then it'll come back so now we can play around with the glow factor we uh, might change the threshold for this one to point one control how much glow effect or how less glow effect that we want to have so point eight means probably less glow and things like that i mean we, there's loads of things you can do with it you may be wondering how to do simple transitions in Blender. well that's quite simple all you need to do is for example if you want to do a fade transition uh you would say start with something like this and then you'd, you'd work you would create like an animation so for example uh you put the opacity of this one to zero and then you hit i to animate it at that point so you, in other words you create a keyframe at that point with zero opacity and then you go towards the end of this video clip and then you turn the opacity of this one to one then hit i over there if i go to effect strip and then speed control i can control effectively how fast this video plays in order to control the speed we can uh, right click and select this video clip and then select this edge over here where you see this arrow make sure that that turns white now if i drag it out the video uh, plays back slowly, really, really slowly. But if I drag it inwards, less than the original video clip length, then it should play really, really fast. Like so. Okay, so there's all these cool things you can do with um, uh, effect strips in Blender. Note the ordering as well. Anything that's stacked on top like this will uh, appear in front in Blender. So this video clip will appear in front of this one. Uh, with music, say you want to start the video with uh, no sound and then slowly transition into uh, loud sound, or you want to transition it from being um, from music and then it fades out to nothing. You can do that as well. Just scrub the timeline to somewhere where you want the volume to start uh, fading out and then uh, hit I where it says volume. And then go to the end where you want the volume to completely fade out change the volume to zero and then hit i again and then now the um uh the music should uh, fade out for copyright reasons i cannot show you that example but you can try it out on your own to see what it looks like we can also add text as well so just go to add and then look for generate text okay so if I zoom in over here, we can see we have a new uh, strip that's available now in Blender 2.8 called text. So we can see it over here quite clearly. If you want to increase the size of that, uh, go over here and increase the font. It's slow on me, it's lagging on me a little bit. But oh, you can also right click and insert keyframe. You don't, you don't have to remember how to press I. Uh, right click and insert keyframe will do the same thing. But um, say I want to make this size 50. Now the text size is a bit bigger. And say I want to move the location. Say I don't want it to go all the way near the end. I want to move it up a bit. You can do something like 10. You can do something like 0 0.1. 0 0.1 will move it a little bit further up. Um, and we can, to actually change the, the word itself, just change the text to something like uh, testing subtitles or something like that. There you go. Um, unfortunately, at this time, uh, there's no way to change the font anywhere. Or at least I couldn't find it yet. Um, maybe it might come in a future version of Bender, but I can't. I can't. But I, I didn't see it anyway. So. Uh, what you have is you're, you're pretty much stuck with the default uh, font over here but uh, that's why it's probably much it's, that's why I would say it's pretty much only good for creating uh, basic subtitles for your for your movies for your video clips 
you can't at this time you can't really create fancy title effects like you can with Power Director and Premiere and those um, uh, off-the-shelf 3D software. Uh, you pretty much have to create your own titles, unfortunately. You have to use something like GIMP or Photoshop to create the text and then import that as a PNG into your video clips. Yeah, like for this titling, for my own movie, uh, I had to literally create this titling in GIMP. I don't actually have Photoshop, I use GIMP. Uh, and then I create these uh, glowy effects within GIMP as well. And then I import it into the uh, sequencer as a PNG image with transparency. One last thing that I didn't cover is how to save this as a video clip. So once you're done with everything, you can go into the rendering tab over here and then uh, to test your render, you can hit F12. That's how your video clip will look like at that time of the render. So if I hit escape, I'll, um, so on frame, currently I'm on frame 4,767. So this is what your, your video clip will look like on frame 4,767. So we need to render 19,742 frames. So to actually render your video clip, uh, you need to configure all these stuff. So what's your resolution? Uh, general high definition resolution tends to be 1920 by 1080. Uh, if you want to go by what your video clip is, uh, you can check the resolution of your video clip by just selecting on your uh, video clip uh, strip and then looking under original dimension. Just uh, copy that, that value that you see there and then your video should render in the correct proportion. Uh, the percentage over here, that's just mostly for test rendering purposes. Like for example, when I do test renderings, I always put it like say 30%. This means that it will render at 30% of the original resolution. So 30% of 1920 by 1080. So I generally only use this just to create very quickly uh, test, test uh, video clips, just to see overall what it looks like. But when I want to do the final video clip, always set it at 100. Uh, frame rate, uh, make sure you get this one right. Know the frame rates of your video clip. I'm not really sure, I couldn't really find out from uh, uh, this scene over here, from, from these settings over here, how to find out what your actual frame rate is. But if you have something like VLC player or Windows Media player or something that can tell you that, then go ahead and input, go ahead and select the correct one over here. If it's something really unusual, you can use custom and then type uh, the actual frames per second manually. Another really important setting that you need to change is the file format. So make sure you change that to either FFMPEG video or AVI JPEG. I tend to use FFMPEG video. Uh, it's just personal preference. There's nothing really uh, good or bad about it that I found. The video clips always tend to look okay for me. Um, and then under encoding, make sure that you choose the container that's suitable for you. So for me, I always tend to go MPEG-4, sometimes even AVI. Those are the two sort of standard uh, extensions. So MPEG-4 will save it as a .mp4 uh, file. AVI will also obviously save it as a .avi video file. Um, the video codec, I haven't really, I mean, if you know the video codec uh, quality and all that stuff, I mean, I haven't touched these. If you know more about this stuff, then go ahead and experiment with that, but I haven't touched any of that stuff. Uh, audio. If you have music, audio, voiceovers, or anything like that in your video clips, make sure you select one of these ones. Uh, me, I always select MP3. Um, I mean, I don't know if that's the proper way to do it. If you find something else better, then go ahead and use that one. You also need to select where you want to save the file. So go ahead and select the uh, folder icon over there, select where you want to save the file and then give your file a name like uh, video output something like that um, and that's it once everything else is set up over here now it's just a, a matter of actually rendering it to a video file so in order to do that just go to render and render animation the naming doesn't make sense, I know, but since Blender was actually made for rendering animations, uh, that's why the, the naming is set up in such a way. It works in 3D animation as well. So once you have your 3D models and animations all set up, you can also do render and render animation, which will also save it as a video clip. So that's the reason why we have that there. But uh, yeah, in our case, you can either press render animation or control F12, and that will start the rendering process and save your video clip. So that's it. I hope this video has been useful to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.